Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to Pico 8 um, Hero 2. So this is gonna be pork like we're making rogue like. So in the last episode we've been <laughs> sleepwalking, I'm mean sleepwalking through <laughs> through making this this beautiful um, throwing um, pattern animation kind of thing. Uh, I kind of like this because um, maybe I should like <laughs> um, rationalize why I did this. Um, I like um, things that like visual communicate things um, because like um, if it was like ambiguous of what, about what we're doing here, like, visually ambiguous, then we would have to like print like maybe uh, like a text box that says like you know where do you want to throw the thing. But I think if you click on something and say throw and then you see you know this kind of animation you kind of understand okay I'm actually throwing something at something um, so yeah today we're actually gonna go throw I think <laughs> that's not working yet um, we have like already a function for this this year throw um, so in here we are actually gonna have to now do the actual throwing lucky for us a lot of the things are actually already in place and I'm gonna actually steal some of those things um, let me see uh, when we're drawing things yeah this throw tile thing that was good that we programmed that one because we we need that we definitely need the tile that we're throwing things at I think that's a that's generally a good idea and then um, we're gonna check if the thing that we're throwing is in bounds because if it's not in bounds we are throwing it basically outside of the map and then we don't really care about what's happening um, like this and then uh, if let's let's just assume that we're throwing things outside of the bounds that's that makes things a lot easier right um, because that means that we just don't care about any kind of effect uh, we just make want to make sure that um, let me see we want to make a bump animation in that direction can we do that is that possible mob bump that's what we want yeah that, let's do that mob bump um, p mob and then um, the throw direction, right? So um, throw, throw dix and throw do. <laughs> throw dix, throw do. <laughs> I mean, I'm a child, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, we want to delete the inventory, but we have to grab the inventory slot first. <clears throat> so we have to figure out this later. And as, instead of the uh, update game, we're going to P move. We're going to go update P move, right? So it's like. Here, P turn. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Oh, my Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, gameplay. Yeah, there we go. I'm the P turn. We also want a PT to set to zero, so there is an actual animation going on. So let's see how that looks. Oops, <laughs> I ate it. <laughs> uh, Okay, so already the animation is happening correctly. Um, now it didn't really, like we didn't, didn't see a projectile going out of us, and we might not actually animate a projectile because that kind of like requires us to create maybe like a little um, kind of particle system, and we might not want to have one. Um, I think generally the way my experience was with the pr prototype, just making like a pew sound sounds already enough, like like uh, like throwing. Uh, but if you want to add a particle effect here, just, you know, go ahead, just like make sure that, that you're investing the right thing. Because this was a lot of tokens here, right? <laughs> this was at least 100 tokens, let's see. Just drawing the this this line. Yeah, that was like, that was over 100 tokens. <laughs> um, so if you add like even more, invest even more into this drawing, just want to make you want to make sure that you actually get, you know, uh, get enough out of the drawing. Of the throwing mechanic. Good. So now we're going to have to figure out what item we're throwing. We actually didn't save the item that we're throwing, and it might be worthwhile. The way I did it previously is I would grab the item from from um, in here, but it might be worthwhile. Um, let me think about this. Well, hmm. Um, I'm gonna do a, um, I'm not sure by the way if we need to throw there. We might not need it. Um, but are we gonna use a third slot, uh, throw slot. 
Um, we don't actually have to define it here. We can define it when we actually throwing, right? Yeah. Um, and we use it in the gameplay function. It's just going to be the item slot that we're throwing is, is what I thought. Um, that might be the, the most, the most, the best function uh, to do here. So let's see. Um, that's prop that was UI, right? Um, yeah, show use, trig use, trig use. Yeah, there we go. So when we throw, <laughs> we're going to go the thrustlet. <laughs> um, we're going to figure out the thrustlet and it's going to be... So this is going to be now the... Yeah, so it's going to be I minus three, right? I just want to have like the inventory slot that we're talking about so we don't have to calculate again because you know at this point when we do a throwing you know the item the menu has disappeared so we don't really know what happened to the menu i mean it, the way i did it previously i just grabbed it from the menu um item that was the for menu that was no longer visible on the screen which is it's fine it works but it's i don't know it doesn't, doesn't seem like a very very natural way of doing this so i think um, uh, just having like a th through slit, like a sl slot, um, this, save the slot of the item that you're actually throwing, um, might save us some some tokens perhaps. Even. Um, so here in, we're gonna go in the through slit uh, equals no because we throw the actual item, right? Uh, we might also go um, here itm equal um, and we're gonna set that itm to the actual item that we're throwing so this is gonna be in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm a child um and right so here we kind of have to figure out what we're throwing at if you're throwing at something that is the wall in generally this won't make a difference unless later on we're gonna have bombs or something <laughs> that would be like okay if you throw a bomb at a wall now something interesting would happen um but what we actually want to do now is going to do something like mb uh, equals has mob is it or oh, get mob we had we call it get mob right get mob tx and ty so we're grabbing a mob. If we hit a mob, if m -m -b, then then interesting things happen because then we are actually hitting the mob, and then it kind of depends on what kind of uh, item we have. So if itm itm underscore uh, did we call it type type yeah type um, square brackets item. Uh, equals food. If so, we, if, we throw, if we throw if we're throwing food among other monster, then else end. So else is going to be like a throwable item, um, like general general throw, throwable item and food because it's just like two items that can throw food or like these throwable items. Later on, maybe you will have like other items that can also throw that do other effects. And then you would have to like specify it here. Um, but here um, for the food, that's actually easy. We are already tell, uh, dealt with this. It's going to be um, itm. Is it itm? Let me see real quick. How are we, how we, how is eating? How do eating works? Yeah, it's just item, right? So yeah, we're just gonna like if we if we throw a food at a at an enemy, we're just gonna eat the item and the enemy eats the item this time around the enemy eats the item uh, let's see if that works because we so far just like our main character has eaten the item so that's gonna be exciting yeah it should, should be fine though and then otherwise we're gonna go hit mob now this is a bit of an issue here because our hit mod function works a little bit differently. So first of all, we're gonna hit this mob, but then it's kind of weird because we don't have, like, it's not like two mobs are hitting each other. This is a situation where a mob is being hit by, by a thing. So because right now we have like attacking mob, defending mob, and then we go through all of this, the, the things, but this time around, there is no attacking mob. There's just like a number of points that we're attacking for. So, hmm. We could add um, a second 
raw DMG, like something like this. Um, and then if it's, yeah. And then so we're gonna go like um, local DMG and then we're gonna actually use, can we do this, use this? Yeah, we can, right? Yeah. We're gonna go D we're gonna use the ternary here. I'm sorry, I like the ternaries now. <laughs> so we're gonna go DMG equals uh, ATKM. So if it's set to 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 a thing, and then you're gonna grab the attacking um, the attacking value uh, or raw DMG. Otherwise, if it's not set, the attacker is not set, then you will get just the raw DMG, the third value here. And defender is doing things. It's good. Flash float. Um, good. Okay. So that's that should that we kind of like tweak the hit mob function be a bit more flexible, and that out allows us um, to be like nil, no attacker. Um, this is going to be the defender, and the raw is going to be the raw value of how much damage it does. We're going to get that from the stats of the of the item. And so that's some, the last thing that the last stat that we got to figure out. Um, so um, again, red bean paste uh, stat one for the red bean paste indicated what effect the red bean uh, the the food has, and so the throwable items here, the ninja star, uh, that's going to be just like how much damage it does, and so it's for us it's going to be two dam uh, one damage. So let's see if this works. Um, gameplay. So it's going to be uh, etm stat one etm. Do we need something else? Let me see. I think we're fine. We might be fine. Let's try this. I want to hit a mob. Okay. Um, ah. Uh, let's let's throw a ninja star. It did not work. The ninja star is gone at least, so I'm I'm happy with that. But so for some reason it didn't work. Why well, don't know. Let me throw some food. Maybe the food will help. Oh. Come on, man! You get you get discouraged so easily. Let's let's go to the food throw. And by the way, I don't like how uh, we're hitting the mob now, but it's not flashing or doing anything. So it might be worthwhile doing something here. Okay, it didn't do anything. We didn't. At least we didn't see anything. Not sure what is happening here, but you know what? Let me um, let me debug this a little bit. Um, so we're gonna go debug uh, one equals um, yes mob just like to see if, if it maybe doesn't see the mob maybe that was the problem here uh, oh, come on come on dude you 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 can do this okay it did not see the mob right but we we do throw right yes th throw. Oh, what? Interesting, it did work. Huh. So the DMG didn't really work here. DMG was nil. Okay, that's interesting. Let's, let's see if what happens if we draw the red bean paste. Okay, did throw? What is the? You guys already probably already see the issue here. Okay, so let us let us start now. This is going to be a good learning situation where it's like we're going to figure out what the problem with this function is. So we know that we be throwing, um, we're throwing it. Then we're going to say inbounds, um, and then we're going to say found mob like all these things and so if we are gonna see found mob we know that it actually it, it knows exactly what we're throwing things at okay I'm starting to feel like the problem might be um, somewhere related to the item because it did damage it's hit mob that is, is causing the issue, but I threw the bean now. Hmm. 
but maybe it's it's getting the mob wrong okay right now I got in bounds but I didn't get a mob so it's something related to the mob that is still causing issues to how we're getting the mob Uh, so I got inbounds, but I didn't get in mob. So so MB was 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 nothing. So it didn't get the MB correctly. I wonder if maybe um, the ITM is, is maybe this is somehow interacting. So let let's local ITM equals thrust like this. Um, also let's debug. Uh, just so we know where, which item we are throwing, uh, debug uh, two equals slot uh, dot dot thruslet dot 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 um, item type item. Just to see what kind of type we're 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 throwing here. There's clearly something wrong here. Oh man, I hate it when he doesn't see me around the corner. I just want to hit hit him. Okay, uh, red bean paste throw. So it's food slot three. It did found find a mob. Slot three is correct. Wait a minute, I got I think it worked now. So maybe that was the issue all along. Yes. Yeah, okay, it, it worked now, I guess. So that was the issue. Let me let me throw the red bean paste. Yes, yes, this works, this works. So I guess the problem is that I'm, we were... We were um, hmm, interesting. Here, uh, the throw tile function um, that re returned multiple values and that got, got, got confused with the item slot. So I think the item slot was... Does this work if I put the item slot first? because that's how I had it last time around. So first we apply the item and then we apply the TX and TY from the throw tile function. Let's see how that works. Mm. Yeah, that works. Um, and let's see. Let's see. Let's heal them up again. That's perfect. Good. Um, so this looks a bit lame because we don't have any sound effects and we don't have any like um, um, you know nothing. Like there's there's a bit of a juice missing here. Uh, we could add a little bit of juice where we uh, play the sound that uh, that hurts the enemies. The enemy hurts sound when we hit it with something that's not the food. That's this one, uh, SFX58. Um, and but uh, the eat sound obviously that's going to be have to be uh, we have to figure out some other sound for that. Uh, let's just see. Do they have a throw sound somewhere? No, we're gonna have to figure out a throw sound for like a pew. So it's kind of like you know you kind of hear something flying through the air a little bit. Um, but that's not the part I want to focus on um, right now. There's a little detail here where I want to highlight if a mob was being hit. I think this is like a very important thing to kind of like, you know, it's kind of like where it's like, okay, if there is a mob, if you're gonna actually throw at a mob, then um, then make that mob blink somehow perhaps, or, 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 or things like that. Uh, 
So we're gonna get a mob um, in, in a draw function here when we're drawing the the stuff that is about um, about you know the in the draw function when the throw mode is on. We're gonna go with something like if um, mb um, then and then mb dot flash one or well, maybe two. Um, but if we set it to flash to one, it will just be white all the time. So maybe we actually up here, this is, might be like local thurani equals um, Let's see, how do we, how did we do this last time around? Okay, so something like this. And then if thurani equals zero, and then down here, um, how do we do this? Okay, yeah, so something like this. So actually we might be thurani equals zero, something like this. And then if thurani, then this, and then down here, um, when we're flashing them up, if MB and Therani. That's what I'm thinking. Let's try that. So now I throw the star. You can see that the, the map is now blinking, so it's like um, even clearer that, that they will get hit a little bit. Well, it's not as clear, but it's a little better than, than without it. What happens if we make it flash two? Nah, flash one was better. Okay, so far so good. Maybe we're gonna clean this up a little bit and then put everything in one line. Let's Let's see how that works. Just saving a bunch of tokens here. Um, I like putting like an X and a Y together in one line, that's fine. We could even like mush them even more together, but we might not just like, because that's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a bit, a bit uh, complicated. Uh, we definitely wanna maybe do this in a specific line. So it's like this. Okay, yeah, and again, like we might be, we might save some. Should we do it now? How are we going to do this? Let's try it. Let's just try it. Um, instead of the line, we just we can do the rectangle. So it's going to be rect fill, and then we're gonna go with those first two, and with those last two. I'm not sure if this will work. There's there's a good chance that this won't actually work. It's kind of hard to tell, but it seems like it's working. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Let's. Um, I mean, we could make it more clearer if we make this all like yellow, or like this. Oops. I just want to fill. So now we can see it better. That seems to be working, good. Okay. Um, okay, so we got um, this stuff figured out. Um, now the only thing for us left to do, oh well, not the only thing, but there's like, um, so we get like throwing going on here already. Again, I, I will put the star here because I'm pretty sure that we can get uh, some, a bunch of more tokens here if we optimize even more. For example, this could be we could turn this into ternary, perhaps, because these are numbers. There's, there's, I, I think there's still, I'm still work, work to be left on the table, but I'm not gonna get too deep into it right now. Uh, what I wanna do instead is, um, let me see, what do I have here? Um, did I, yeah, let's go back to the, 
to this function. Let's just clear up this function here, the um, the UI um, here, because oh boy, that's that's I think a lot of stuff that we can clean up here. Uh, I'm gonna uh, see how many tokens we we save here. So basically, when I trash or equip, basically the same things happen. I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna return. Right. Mm. In any case, use win use wind direction is always uh, duration is always. Uh, and here I'm, I am fixing this, Christian. Don't worry. In any case, the use wind uh, once once it gets removed, so we don't need to repeat this over and over again. Um. Do we actually have a turn here? Yeah, we have a turn here. Do we have a game? We don't have a game. We never actually use the game option. So we don't need the game. So it's really just like back, turn, or throw. Um, back is used twice, turn is used once, and throw is used once. So maybe we can um, we can actually copy this one out. But actually, turn and throw are actually doing the same thing. So let's go... Let's call this close. <laughs> like this, and then this is going to be throw. Uh, we this is also going to be close. And then we don't need this anymore. Um, it's just like when you're closing, um, then I want like the animation for the windows to shut down. So that's why I have like the duration set to zero. But if I'm back, I, I want to actually delete the windows and uh, show a new inventory. And we're using this twice, so that's fine. Um, yeah, in any case, the use window gets, gets uh, down to zero. So this is a lot more, a lot more uh, simpler. We could even we could even go something like we call, call this back else. And it's like back instead of in, instead of where is it? after instead of calling this back we're gonna call this true mm. back and then back equals false back equals false like this so just really like if you're going back or if you're just like closing everything. Um, so let's see if this works. Let's just equip a sub, I think. Yeah, it, it worked nice. Let's equip this. Let's uh, equip this. That's good. Let's throw something away. That's good. Let's eat something. That's also good. I'm not sure if we actually take the turn, but we should have, right? And then let's throw something. Okay. Yeah, it's behaving correctly. Um, I want to see how this works when an enemy is active. So we see if we actually... Okay, so I wasted a turn now. I'm going to throw. Okay. Yep. This is working. So yeah, we cleaned this up a little bit. And now we saved like around 50-ish tokens. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like it. There's probably even more we can do here. Like the slot is maybe like these equations here. Probably we can all, all put one in one row, so that saves that a little bit of tokens here. <laughs> mm. 
like this. Oh, there's probably one thing we can save. Um, I'm gonna yeah, that's, you have to remember you have to remind me of, of checking this. Let me let me fix this real quick. Um, so these equations all can go in one line. Um, back equals false and pt equals zero like this so everything is one line again makes it a little less readable but we might not actually you know fumble around too much with this kind of stuff so let's see oh yep um yeah we we broke we broke things yeah let me see something is wrong here What did we do? Did we just delete the function? Oh my gosh. Function. How did we call this again? <laughs> oh my gosh, we just accidentally deleted this. Um, what was the name of the function? <laughs> like, like, like trig use, right? Trig use. Yeah. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to see, like, I'm not sure if I'd actually need the threader. Uh, so let me see an update function here. Um, update throw here. Uh, yeah, we're saving a three threader in, uh, in here. But actually, if we just put it in here and grab this one out, then we actually don't need the threader. And this is gonna be fine. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good. So throwing works. Oops. I always press some random button. By the way, somebody told me that somebody just told me that um, a s s control D will duplicate the line. Liars. Why do they lie so much? Or is it. Do I have to copy it first? Well, I guess. If you. What's the difference between. Oh, wait. So you have to go be in the line. Oh, that's interesting. So if, you, if your cursor is in a line. And you press Control D, it will just basically select the entire line and, and duplicate it. Huh, interesting. Good. All right, so this was it. Um, so this means a momentous occasion. Basic gameplay is done, from what I understand. Most of the stuff we, want, we have is basically done. <laughs> I don't even have anything in my, my thing anymore. So there is some sound effects that we might add, but that's kind of like polishing stuff. We're gonna probably, like sound effects are a bit awkward because you have to kind of, kind of go through this process of copying the sound effects from my other file. So I'm not sure when and how I'm gonna do the sound effects. Um, but, and there's this one little, you know, gameplay detail where it's like, okay, I actually don't want the player to bump against the wall. I want I want them to actually have to interact with, with um, items oh and one important thing we can't actually pick up items now there's no way for us to get items um, so that's something we might want to introduce but we actually might want to go to procedural generation next oh, it's it's time guys it's time um, because uh, <coughs> the way we pick up items is going to be um, dependent on procedural generation a little bit um, the way I set it, right, set it up right now is um, I have like these chests 
and you know you will get like a random num uh, item from this chest but that kind of like goes into like this okay how do are we randomizing which num which item you get because you want to have like common items very frequently and rare items rarely and so how do we check rarity and stuff like that stuff like that <laughs> so um you know if this is your game that you don't want to use procedural generation for then it's gonna be your challenge up to you kind of like how to figure out how they how to um, specify which item is where you will basically use this like this take item function to give the player different items but um, for us um, we're gonna do everything procedural generated so we're gonna have to actually have like a system that kind of like you know put, puts the items in the in the chests and 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 um, yeah, so like, I think we, it doesn't make sense for us to set up a system where we can manually distribute items. We do it immediately in the procedural generation. So um, in the next episode, we're gonna start generating a dungeon um, and we're gonna start populating the dungeon with things and we're gonna make a like, little labyrinth and it's gonna be great. So this is, you know, the part that I'm, I'm really excited for and I think a lot of you were really interested in. I already seen a lot of people in the um, Discord, which you can see the link off downstairs um they are already creating like beautiful tile sets for their own um roguelikes and they have like other features like scrolling and uh, i'm really excited to see what you what you guys gonna come up with so yeah see you on the next episode where we're gonna do procedural generation and um yeah as always get a t-shirt maybe not like this one but like a really good one that is uh this has like maybe like a token limit on them on it and also um yeah the code is gonna be also in doobly-doo see you next time around guys bye bye <laughs>